What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to part 3 of replacing green screens and devices with After Effects and Mocha. And if you haven't seen part 1 or part 2, feel free to click the videos on the screen right now to check it out. Other than that, here we go. So in part 1 we covered how to replace a static screen with something such as this. Part 2, we covered how to replace a phone screen that is moving, tracking it in Mocha. Now in part three, we will be replacing, excuse me, part three, we will be replacing the screen, but this time there is a thumb moving in front of our image. So we got to, uh, you know, get rid of it, track it, got it. So let's get started. So real quick, if you just joined us, um, jump down into the description and click that media fire link to download the project file with the assets so you can follow along and learn something. Sweet. So let's get started. First off, we've got to go to our footage, which is number three right here. You'll find it in the footage folder. Right click, new composition from selection. So we got number three. And to get started, as always, um, we're going to right click new solid, call it um, thumb screen, width 1080, height by 1920. Lock the aspect ratio. Let's make it a, I don't know, blue screen this time. That'd be kind of cool. Click OK. Next step, we're going to go to Effects and Presets. Go to Corner Pin. And if you watch the other tutorials, you know exactly what I'm doing. But it's a good habit to keep doing it. So we'll take these little corner pins and move them down. Go to Classic Difference to see the you know, difference of the color. We can kind of see, you know. Opposites, blah blah blah. Just like that. We don't have to line it up perfectly as always, it'll get fixed later. But we'll right click, pre compose the thumb screen layer, do a thumb screen underscore perspective, move all attributes into the new composition, click OK. Double click this, right click, pre compose this again. Let's go to screen, thumb screen underscore flat leave all attributes in thumb screen perspective. Click OK. So if we jump into screen flat, it's a flat screen we can put stuff on. Let's go ahead and type something just in case. Let's do another smiley. Looks good to me. Just throw it on there. Like that. Boom, it's there. So next after we create our little, you know, screen perspective, we need to track the motion of this thing. And since there's a thumb moving in front of the screen, it can be a little more difficult to track. So what we're going to do is on number three, go to animation, track and Mocha AE. And if you followed part two, pretty straightforward, but we're going to track a little bit differently this time to make it work. So Mocha opens up, name number three. Let's do three underscore one because I've done this before. It'll ask me to override if I don't. Click OK. If you haven't used Mocha before, um, two cool tools. So Z on your keyboard, hold it down with your mouse click, lets you zoom in and out, and X lets you move around. Holding X down in the hand tool, cool. Very important shortcut keys in Mocha to get you started. But normally in Mocha, what we would do is we would create an X spline tool right here to create a nice little layer around the thumb because Mocha works kind of like alpha mats and we would track this um, right here we would track the thumb movement just like that it's tracking its little heart away going pretty quickly too, which is nice. Completely messed up right here, the thumb is gone, which is fine, it's not a terrible thing. Um, but what would happen is uh, you would track this thumb out perfectly, where it follows your thumb perfectly, then you would lock this layer, 
create a new layer under layer one and track the screen, then Mocha would say, hey, we're not gonna, we're gonna ignore these pixels of the thumb, but just track the screen. So it would know to track it. But there's a lot of reflections going on in here. A lot of stuff bouncing around. Like this right here is like movement. There's pixels changing. And I think we can avoid this thumb altogether. So we're gonna just gonna delete this layer. Completely ignore it. And we're gonna track other data inside of our uh, composition to help us track Mocha. So we'll click this little X right here. The first thing we're gonna circle around is right here. We're gonna track this. We're gonna put this around, this. Right click, then you click your X plus and we can start putting in new data to track. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit. Zoom out, X plus, and we're gonna go actually around this hand because if you watch the footage back um, that you downloaded, this hand never moves at all. So this should be some really clean data that stays in perspective for our phone. Okay, now if we go to the top, the entire side of this phone is a hard silver line that never changes. So, I think we can put a track around this. Just like that. And don't worry if the others overlap. It's not gonna hurt them at all. But I did see in the corner right here where uh, this, this reflection right here was changing and it can really mess you up because it's changing. We'll do another plus because this is actually a hard line at the top that we can track that data right across here from the top. Right there, right click the in that and then move down. And yeah, I think we could use this as our tracking data. I think this will work. Next up, we need to click this little button right here. It creates like a little, turns our square on. There's the original right there. Move these corners up to here. If you followed part two, you'll know exactly what we're doing right now. And as we track along, we can always add new, more tracking data from the beginning to uh, really help sell this or you know track it. Because Mocha's pretty smart and you can use turn the grid on to see it. Um, you can use some pretty nifty tracking points or data to analyze. So change the minimum pixels to 90%, turn perspective on, and yeah. From here we can start tracking and just the, we can kind of watch as we go to see how well it does. So let's track forward. And there is no track around this thumb right now, so we don't have to worry about it. There's other tutorials online that use Mocha like this, and it you know uses a subtract of the thumb or whatever else, and it can get really annoying. But if you're really you know clever, you can track other parts of the phone to help you along your way. And if you look, so far so good. Our box is staying right around, and there's a big movement just now, and it worked. and it's looking really good. The track is really clean right now. Another big movement and it followed it. We're getting a lot of data from this hand, this corner up here. And I did it this way just so you know that you don't always have to track the screen. You can track other things in the image or the way it moves to find data points. So if you'll see in like a behind the scenes movie thing, there's like a blue dot on the wall or a green screen with X's. They're using the X's as tracking points. And we use this circle. We used the side of the phone right here. And this is pretty spot on. It looks really good so far. And it looks like we've done it. So let's watch it back. Our screen looks, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I mean, I'm not going to say perfect, but it's really, really good. I think right here it falls off a little bit in this little corner. You can see the corner kind of scooting in that line. Really simple. What we're going to do 
is we're going to start at the beginning. You get to adjust track. Click our bottom left layer. Zoom forward to where it starts to move. Let's just, you know, zoom in. Come on. Move over and just move this. We're adjusting our track. So by the end, it's perfect. So yeah, adjust your track. Click adjust track. Go to that corner that kind of fell off a little bit. Start from the beginning, zoom forward, and adjust it. Just move it over a tiny bit. Once that's done, let's zoom out. Click this button right here. Push the, to, uh, push the surfaces. Create these yellow lines. Then you click export tracking data. Click the middle option after effects corner pin. Click copy to clipboard. You can minimize mocha now. Jump back into your composition, what we created before. The smiley face. Now command V to paste these pixels onto your screen. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lock this layer, jump into thumb screen perspective. Actually, you know what? Jump back into this. Change this to classic difference. Now jump into your thumb screen perspective. And we are going to use corner pin to align. And yes, before, if you watched part two, you already know what we're doing. We're just aligning this in our other composition. All right, looks pretty aligned. Exit out, unlock this, jump back to three, click play or change this back to normal and click play. We need to move our top over a little bit. Jump into the screen perspective real quick. I can kind of tell. Move this over right there. Click play. You can see the screen falls in right here a little bit, but it's not going to be anything anybody notices. Not a perfect track in the world, but it's not going to be detrimental. So, next up, we need to get rid of this green screen so we can drop the thumb under it. So what we're going to do, real quick and dirty, is go to effects and presets, go to key light, Key light 1.2, drop it onto here, pick whip the green, and it looks dirty real fast. Everything looks all buzzy. What you're going to do is go to combine matte, drop down your uh, screen matte, go to hard color, clip your black a little bit up, I don't know, 24, move 67 down to like 40, go to final result. Now we're back to that. Right there. Looking pretty good. And what I would do also is I would uh, Command D, duplicate this footage, hide the la under layer. And then what we're going to do is actually turn key light off. We're going to create a mask from frame one. around this footage and what we're gonna do is drop this down and we're going to track mask so right click track mask track forward we're tracking the mask and the reason we're doing this is just to kinda we'll take copy and paste this key light onto this top layer take key light off of the bottom layer turn it back on drop it down below that turn our screen on and now we've only really like affected this layer it's a uh, kinda of by itself like that we can actually go into um, Softness, soften our screen up a little bit. Grow, grow it a little bit. And it's only affecting the top layer now and not 
this bottom layer. So there's, you know, it's empty. And our key light effect is not taking advantage of it. So, it's a real quick and dirty way of doing it. So if you click play, and what we can do next is go into our mask and actually feather it a good bit. So it blends really well with the background. You can see it's pretty blended right there. Let's actually drop that feather down. Fifty six pixels is pretty much spot on. It looks pretty good. Cool. Next up, what we're going to do is jump into our screen perspective, jump to our screen flat. Right click new adjustment layer. And before we do that, I'm going to drag and drop in a screenshot of a phone like we used before to kind of like, you know, give us something to look at. So, real quick, we're going to go to effects and presets. Type, oh, excuse me, yeah, on our adjustment layer. Click blinds, Venetian blinds. Drop it on the adjustment layer. Transition, 3%. Width, 10. Go to box blur. And we're doing this to uh, sell the effect a little more. Blur by 0.2. Blurs our screen a little bit. Jump back to 3. What we'll do now is on thumb screen perspective, go to layer, layer style. Not inner shadow, I'm sorry. Layer, layer style, inner glow. Change the glow to a dark color. Change it to normal. Make the size a little bigger. So there's like a, like a uh, you know a nice little uh, almost like a shadowy effect inside the phone to make it look more real. Then jump into screen perspective. Go to layer, layer style, stroke, and add a black stroke to the edge so it fits into the screen a lot more we can go back to this that screen grow stuff we can kinda like take it back a little bit like that and boom click play and watch our phone in action Looks pretty good. We could play with key light a little more to make it work a little better. But um, I think for now it's really good. There's a lot more work you could do to that thumb. But today we were just tracking the screen. If you'd like to know how to make that thumb look perfect, leave a comment. I'll let you know. Other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Very, very well done. I know it, the, like the track I said before, it falls off a little bit, but it, I think it works really well. Other than that, that was part three of how to put a phone or track a phone, track a screen into a phone. I hope you enjoyed all these. Hope that you found them helpful. As always, I am Max. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. And give me a suggestion. I would love to make something else for you guys. As always, take it easy. Have a great week. And I'll catch you next time. Peace. Oh, yeah, and check out part one and part two if you haven't already. Other than that, whoop, whoop. Take it easy, lemon squeegee. Oh, that's weird. Whatever. Whatever.